Hey, and welcome back to another video from my Vintage Tech Showcase playlist. And what we have today is the Motorola Droid X from 2010. Now the Droid X is one of the best-selling phones uh, back in 2010, um, alongside the iPhone 4 and etc, etc. Um, and probably one of the easily the top five best-selling Android phones of 2010 as well. It's also my favorite Android phone ever released. Uh, if, if anyone asks me what is my favorite Android phone ever to be released, it's the Motorola Droid X. And there are a lot of reasons why, uh, ranging from design and just the, the looks of it. And like, um, I just like, I have this really uh, weird connection to this phone. I really, really like it. And in this video, we'll be doing a retro sort of review on this, uh, give you some camera samples and the specs etc etc but before we jump right in don't forget to smash that like button and hit that subscribe button as well and check out all my social media which includes instagram discord and twitter which you can find the links to down in the description below Alrighty, let's jump right into this okay so like i said earlier the motola droid x is a phone from 2010 and was only available on the verizon network Verizon also offered this phone in Mexico under a different uh, model number. Sometimes it was called the Motorola Shadow, Motorola Droid Shadow or the Motorola Droid Extreme MB810. Uh, but generally it's known as the uh, Motorola Droid X. Uh, <clears throat> it was also known as the Motorola Motoroy something something in uh, Mexico, uh, but then again, the Droid branding is Verizon uh, owned, so there is no other phone that can have the Droid branding. Only Verizon can do Droid phones. Every single Droid phone released, whether it be Motorola, HTC, was it Mo yeah, Motorola, HTC, and Samsung did a few as well. Um, though all the Droid phones were Verizon exclusives, um, so uh, they're all locked onto the Verizon network. This phone, like I said, sold really well in 2010. Uh, it had a great bunch of uh, specifications for the price and especially a locked phone. It's not going to be as pricey as an unlocked phone. And a lot of people were drawn to its design as I, w as I was as well. Um, <clears throat> I really like the uh, minimalist black kind of Batman like kind of looking thing. I, I, I really like this phone's design. It's strange, I know, it just looks like a crappy phone from 2010 for most people, but it looks really sleek, and it, as, as a kid back in the day, uh, back in 2010, it kind of reminded me of something that would be in a Batman movie, but um, each and everyone has their own preference, but I really like the design of this phone. And speaking of design, let's have a quick go around of the phone itself. So up front, um, as you can see, the display is there. I'll talk about the display in a bit. It's an LCD display. Verizon branding down here. Physical buttons, uh, something you do not see anymore. It's long gone, the time of physical buttons. No front camera, speaker grill up top with Motorola branding. Um, <clears throat> the microphone is down here. On this side, we have a color coded uh, red color, uh, AKA the, the droid color, black and red. Uh, the, the theme of all droid phones was black body, red accents. So um, we have a red uh, camera shutter button there. Um, volume rockers up and down. At the back, Motorola branding with the Motorola logo. Uh, Google, Verizon, another microphone and a speaker. Uh, <clears throat> the camera is up here, the eight megapixel camera with dual LED flash. On this side, we have a mini HDMI and micro USB port alongside a lanyard strap, because back in the day, people used lanyard straps on their phones, especially uh, Nokia phones. Nokia included uh, lanyard straps on almost all their mobile phones. So this also does have a lanyard strap. Up top, we have the power button and a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack with another microphone as well. And at the bottom, we have nothing, just a bit of the lanyard strap popping out from there. So that was a quick go around of the Motorola Droid X. Now let's jump on to discussing the display. So first let's turn it on while we are discussing the uh, display. And um, this actually has probably one of the coolest boot animations ever, the Droid Eye. I'll let you see it uh, now. Uh, first it starts with the red Motorola logo and then the Droid Eye. My girlfriend is terrified of this phone and especially all the droid phones uh, because of this eye-like thing because it's a bit creepy. 
um, as you can see, it's a robotic eye. And yeah, my girlfriend is terrified of this phone. Uh, so when I have the volume turned up, it makes this really creepy sound like droid, like that. Let me let me actually show you that sound. It's in the uh, settings here. Uh, it's a really creepy uh, kind of robotic sound, and my girlfriend is extremely terrified of that sound. It should be in uh, it should be in settings here. Let's go to sound and. Phone ringtone. Oh. oh, there we are. Let me increase the volume here. Okay. Nope. There you go. That's the creepy sound. Let me do that again. As you can see, it's generally quite creepy uh, and usually it's tar during the boot animation that song sound plays but I had the volume turned down um, <clears throat> and you cannot increase the volume during the boot animation to make you have to go into the software then increase it anyway now let's discuss the display on the Motorola Droid X so it's a TFT LCD display so slightly older display technology LCD technology uh, TFT LCD 4.3 inches which was huge for 2010 uh, its main rival, the iPhone 4, as you can see here, has a uh, 3.5-inch display, which is tiny in comparison to the 4.3-inch display. Displays were not as large as they get these days. Now, these days, we're ranging in the above, uh, above 4.5 inches to uh, 6 inches. Well, I wouldn't say the base is 4.5. The base is probably like 5 inches now, five, 5 inches and above. But back in the day, this was considered huge compared to the iPhone 4. Um, 4.3 inches, uh, TFT LCD, 480 by 854 pixels with a 16 by 9 aspect ratio and a rough pixel density of around 228 pixels per inch. And we got a talk screen to body ratio because uh, these days we are looking at above 80 screen to body ratio, 80%, above 80%. But this back in 2010 had a roughly around 60 to 61% uh, screen to body ratio. So we, we're talking with reference to 2010. This was uh, an amazing display for 2010. Obviously not as good as the iPhone 4's display because the iPhone 4 was the first display with a pixel density over 300 and it had a pixel density of 330 and it was the display to have in 2010. But this was the net, probably one of the next best things. Um, the display was huge, It was it's vibrant and everything. Now I'm talking with reference to 2010, so don't get me wrong here. By 2021 standards, this is absolute garbage, but for 2010 standards, <clears throat> this was an amazing display and it actually still holds up really well even today, um, I wouldn't have trouble using this phone's display if I had to use it. The colors are decent, the viewing angles are decent. I took this out in the sun just a few uh, minutes late, a uh, few minutes earlier to take the camera samples, and I was pleasantly surprised by its uh, uh, performance in the in sunlight as well. Now, there's an issue with this phone's display. A lot of Droid Xs have this issue. Right around, I think it was this area or this area, right around somewhere in this vicinity, there is this black spot issue. All, almost all Droid X LCDs uh, that you'll find on eBay for like in the cheaper price range. Now, obviously, really well used ones like this, well, you'll not, you won't get the display with that issue, but there is a black spot issue on the Droid X's LCD. It did not have this issue in its service life, so it wasn't an issue affecting it uh, while it was in service back in 2010 to 2012, 13, etc., etc. But if you want to get one of these off eBay, be careful of the black spot. A lot of Droid X's have that black spot. I got lucky. I got this one in a part slot, so it does not have its uh, black spot. I just got lucky. Um, the phone perfectly works, it's etc. etc. Now let's jump on to software in this phone. So initially the Motorola Droid X shipped with Android 2.1, which was Android 2.1 Eclair. And the same year in 2010, it was updated to Android 2.3 Gingerbread and the final update was 2.3.4 Gingerbread, as you can see there. 
Um, it's pretty simple, minimalist Android from 2010 with a lot of bloatware as expected with a locked phone. Because back in the day, you didn't have programs like Android One, etc., etc. You didn't have that many options for phones with stock Android. So when you bought phones with uh, the like locked phones onto a locked network, there was a lot of bloatware that came along with it. Media, sh media share, Verizon apps, then Vcast, VZ Navigator, lots of bloatware. And most of this stuff, you can't delete them. That was just how Android was in 2010. Oh, there's Blockbuster as well. So yeah, um, lots and lots of bloatware. It, that was how it was in 2010. Um, but as you can see, old school Android icons are really, really nostalgic um, stuff that I can remember from 2010. Uh, pretty basic uh, Verizon phone that you could purchase. The software was nothing amazing. Uh, it just got one update as is with a lot of uh, uh, locked phones because like I said, 2.1 Eclair to 2.3 Gingerbread. It did not get a heap of updates like any other phone would have got because locked phones, they usually want you to buy the next phone so they don't push the updates for the older phones. Because what happens is companies like Motorola and all, they will provide the update if the uh, career wants the update. But the thing is, a lot of these old careers, now they do give updates because people uh, were criticizing them for it. But back in the day, um, they didn't really want to give updates. They were like, you know what, let's just give them one update and a bunch of security updates. We'll request that from Motorola, LG, Samsung, whatever. <clears throat> give them that and when the next phone comes out, let's push marketing for the next phone. They really did not want to give updates. But now more locked phones are getting at least two major updates because people were criticizing them and people were uh, opting for getting unlocked phones over these. But these were cheaper, obviously, because they're locked. Either way, that is the software experience uh, on the Motorola Droid X with its last update uh, running Gingerbread from 2010. So now let's open up the hood and see what powers the uh, Motorola Droid X. So the processor in the Droid X is a Texas Instruments OMAP 3630, a 1000 series 3630, uh, single core processor clocked in at one gigahertz. So it's pre-2011 before the LG Optimus 2X, which was the world's first phone with a dual core processor, the Nvidia Tegra 2. So 2010 stuff was all single core. So Texas Instruments manufactured 3630, 1000 series, single core, one gigahertz. It also had a PowerVR GPU for its graphics processing needs. It has an SD card slot with, which included a 16 gig card out of the box, but uh, I don't have that 16 gig card anymore. It has 6.5 gigs of internal storage as well as 512 megs of RAM. And again, pre-2011, pre-Motorola uh, pre Atrix, because the Motorola Atrix was the world's first phone with one gig of RAM. So this is to complete 2010 stuff. Single core processor, 512 megs of RAM. Um, 512 was not the most that you could find in 2010. I think there was an HTC phone that had 760 megs of RAM, but I cannot uh, confirm that. But this was up there on the higher end uh, at 512 megs of RAM. So more than enough to power Android 2.1 and Android Gingerbread as well. Android Eclair and Android Gingerbread, as you can see, it still works perfectly fine. However, obviously in 2021, if you connect it to the Wi-Fi, it's gonna completely slow down uh, because of modern Wi-Fi settings, et cetera, et cetera. But I think you can decently use this phone in 2021. I will be doing a follow-up video to this using the Droid X in 2021. So stay tuned for that by hitting the subscribe button. Um, but overall, pretty reasonably usable. I mean, for basic things, you will have trouble with the app store and stuff. You will have to load apps off uh, the computer. However, um, decent uh, basic tasks, I, I believe you can still run on this phone uh, if you don't connect it to Wi-Fi, because once you do connect to Wi-Fi, it starts slowing down quite a lot. But that was the internal specifications of the Motorola Droid X. Now let's move on to the camera. The camera on the Motorola Droid X is an 8 megapixel shooter with autofocus capability and has a dual LED single tone flash. It can record video at 720p at 24 FPS as well. 
This camera was praised back in 2010 for being one of the best Android cameras uh, that was available on the market. It competed with the iPhone 4 directly as well. It was not obviously not even close to the Nokia N8's camera. The iPhone 4's camera was not even close to the N8's camera. However, it was one of the best cameras on an Android phone back in 2010. And you'll see why in a bit when I post the photo and video samples as well. There is no front camera on this phone, but that wasn't an issue back in 2010. Not everyone needed video calling on the go, but it would have been nice to have it. But still, uh, it, it did not have a front camera. But as the sales of this phone showed, no one really cared because this phone sold really well. But still would have been nice to have because the iPhone 4 had a front camera and the Nokia N8 already also had a front camera. However, the main star of the show here is the 8 megapixel rear camera and I want you to put yourselves in the shoes of an owner from 2010 and appreciate the uh, following uh, camera samples that I'll be posting because it's not right to judge this based on 2021 standards. And with, your, with yourself in the shoes uh, of an owner from 2010, you'll see that uh, this was easily one of the best cameras for an Android phone, if not the best in 2010 uh, obviously the n8 and the iphone 4 were competitors and the uh the n8 had a far superior camera however for android this easily was one of the best so now let's roll some camera samples and video samples as well It's now time for some additional features to be discussed and let's start off with the uh, the volume of this phone, the, the loudness and the, the basically the speaker performance. This phone is really, really loud. Uh, even though it does not have stereo speakers, the loudspeakers on this phone are really, really loud. <clears throat> now, I cannot play music for you ob for obvious copyright reasons and YouTube will take a while to load. I might do that in my full review of this using the phone in 2021, but for now, we'll stick to the inbuilt ringtone and I'll play the droid ringtone. And I have put this on uh, max volume. Let's check, yeah. So that's at max volume. Let's play the Droid X, let's do that. So as you can see, even though they're not stereo speakers, they're really, really loud. And they're really clear as well, because um, I've, I've put some music onto this before and I did listen to it, it was quite, quite loud, doesn't crackle too much at higher volumes. It's not the best, but it's still quite loud and still quite good. Another feature that you find on this and you don't find on most modern phones, well, if not all modern phones, is a physical HDMI port. So HDMI mini port there, you could output 720p uh, of your screen. So 720p video of your screen, you could output anything that you're playing on your screen. Uh, great for presentations and whatnot. Uh, modern phones don't need this because everything is now a uh, wireless. You could do uh, better if, well, if same or if not better, 
uh, than a physical HDMI out with the new uh, technologies available. Bluetooth has improved, um, wireless, wireless in general has improved. So the need for an HDMI port is no longer necessary. Everything is wireless, everything is more efficient. We don't need cables and stuff stuck to our phone. But that was something that phones back in 2010 also had the Nokia N8 also had an HDMI, HDMI out. The iPhone 4, of course, didn't have one because Apple didn't really see sense in it for some reason. But anyway, that's also one feature this phone has. So let's turn off the phone and let's now take a look at the battery on this phone. So the battery on this phone is a 1540 milliamp hour battery, removable lithium polymer battery. So you could still remove batteries in most phones back in 2010, but uh, it was getting harder. It was like around the time, well, I'd say 2011 to 2012 was the time where phones started to get uh, more popular with inbuilt batteries that the common user could not open. Uh, but this one has a battery bay, as you can see, and it has a 1540 milliamp hour battery. Standby time is around 220 hours, and talk time is roughly around eight to nine hours. Uh, so nothing amazing in terms of battery life. However, it was above average uh, for the time. As you can see, it's a BH5X Motorola battery, 3.7 volts. That SD card did not come with this phone. This is the SD card that I put into this phone. Um, I bought that separately for some reason. The cam Even though it has internal memory, it has an internal memory of 6.5 gigs, uh, I cannot use that for the camera. It still prompts me to use an SD card, so I had to put that SD card in there. It has a pull tab to raise the battery, as you can see there. So finally, we come to the end of this video. This was the uh, vintage tech uh, showcase or retro review of the Motorola Droid X from 2010. Uh, my favorite Android phone of all time because of its design and it's just, uh, it's a bit creepy with its uh, Droid logo startup. And I really, really like this phone um, for some reason. I, I really can't explain. I just like the way it looks. Like I said, it kind of looks like a Batman phone. Uh, but it is what it is, my favorite Android phone, uh, which is the Motorola Droid X. So as usual, I hope you enjoyed this video and I thank you for watching this video. If you honestly liked this video, don't forget to smash that like button if you, if you already haven't. And also hit that subscribe button if you already haven't and ring that notification bell to get notified whenever I upload a new video if you like to keep up with my content. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Thumbs up and I'll see you guys in my next video.